Sound Avenue or North Road. And uh, after he plowed his fields every day, in the spring and the fall, he would launch his 16-foot lineman. Those of you with gray hair, no hair, probably know the name of the boat. And he would launch it into the sound with his tractor. No 4x4, four four. there was hardly any 4x4s four in those days. And he would launch it into the sand and fish two or three hours in a place called the proverbial blackfish hole. And I still fish that place to this day. Um, I walked up to him as a little munchkin and said, what are you doing? And he looked at me like, stupid kid, you know, I'm going fishing. <laughs> so uh, I, I said, okay, you know, he's not too friendly. So I just spied on him for the whole time he was out. And when he came in, I uh, walked up to him and said, what'd you catch? And he said, fish. <laughs> okay, where are they? Over there. So I looked in the bag, and it was a bro out there. And I look in, and there were about five or six blackfish that were, at that point in my life, I was 10 years old, looking in the bag, it was the biggest fish I'd ever seen caught in the sand. Because prior to that, all we had caught were floundered. We had only been there a few, few months. Uh, so, I look in and there's about five or six blackfish up to about seven pounds. So I said, well, where'd you get them? He says, out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, he wasn't full of information, but I went home and told Dad. And Dad, being an avid fisherman, went right across the street to the newest friend, friendly neighbor that we met and asked Bob Edwards, who had been around for 50 years, what about this place where Jerry saw these blackfish. Bob said, oh yeah, caught him in the old blackfish hole. So he says, I'll take you out in my boat tomorrow and we'll catch some. So my dad took his seven and a half horse Scott Atwater engine that we used for mostly using in rental stations, put it on Bob's 18 foot rowboat that weighed about 15,000 pounds. <laughs> and we had wooden rollers, three of them. And Jerry was given the task of getting the roller from the stern and carrying it up on a rope up to the bow. And we rolled his 15,000 pound boat into the water, putt-putted out to the blackfish hole, and Bob says, okay, now we're gonna line up the flagpole with Dean Lewin's chimney, and then we're gonna go out to Wildwood State Park water tower, and we're gonna look for that, and when we come in south, and we don't see it anymore, we're gonna be in the hole. And we'll know we're gonna be in the hole when we hit red moss on our hooks. Well, what I just did was give you an example of shore ranges. Those of you that depend on Loran and GPS. Before GPS and Loran, there were shore ranges. That was it. Dead reckoning, compass and watch. But anyway, we got in a hole and we started fishing. And sure enough, Bob predictably said, we're going to get red moss. First time we went to check baits, Red Moss appeared on the hook. He says, he says, we're in the hole. Well, I'd like to tell you a happy ending to that day that we slaughtered the blackfish, but we didn't. We caught nothing but blowfish. They happened to be in droves. In those days, the blowfish were like the old Carter's little liver pills. Mm -hmm. They were 